Another day, another rheumatology video from yours truly, Medicosis Perfectionalis. In previous videos, we have talked about all of the O2 antibodies and even the hypocomplementemia or complement deficiency. Today, I'll talk about human leukocytic antigens or HLA. And with that being said, now let's get started. If there is one fact in rheumatology, it's that no single blood test whatsoever can confirm the diagnosis. Always ask yourself, does the lab test correlate with the clinical picture? We have talked about all of the O2 antibodies involved in lupus, anti-double-stranded DNA, anti-Smith, anti-U1-RNP, anti-ribosomal P-protein. Specific, specific, not specific, specific. This one associated with kidney disease as well as lupus vasculitis. Anti-ribosomal P protein is associated with CNS problems and liver disease in lupus patients. We've talked about the complement system in the previous video. When we're talking about lupus, we're talking about the classical pathway, antigen antibody complex. Here is the classical pathway, antigen antibody complex. They start the cascade, C1 active, C4 and C2, C3 comfortase, converting C3 into C3 and C3B forming C5 comfortase, which converts C5 into C5A and C5B, C5B together with the terminal complement, C6 through C9, we have the MAC, and the MAC just attacks. But in lupus, there is no bacteria to attack, you're attacking your own body, which is called an autoimmune disease. In many rheumatological diseases, you start with an antigen-antibody reaction, form an immune complex, they activate complement, the classical pathway, C5A for chemotaxis, inflammation. We have arthritis, nephritis, vasculitis. We have discussed the causes of hypocomplementemia in the previous video. Just don't forget that lupus is here. Decrease C2 and C4 is seen in these genetic problems. Decrease C3 is due to increased complement activation, could be classical or alternative. Decrease C4 can be seen in classical complement activation, such as lupus. Conditions that have hypocomplementemia are here, and of course, they include lupus. Hypocomplementemia, if it's the early complement deficiency, it's associated with SLE. Late complement deficiency, C5 through C9, associated with invasive Neisseria infections, could be Neisseria gonorrhea or Neisseria meningitidis. How to diagnose complement deficiency? We start by measuring the CH50. It measures the classical pathway. If it's low, it means there is overactivation of the classical pathway, and let's go fishing. If the patient has clinical symptoms of autoimmune disease, let's order the early complement, C1, C2, and C4 proteins. If you suspect Neisseria gonorrhea or Neisseria meningitis, you order the late complement C5 through C9. If you suspect it and they have Neisseria infection, C5 through C9 is going to be low. If they have autoimmune disease, C1, C2, C4 are going to be low. If you haven't got my 50 hematology cases, you are missing out on a huge opportunity that may never come back. Go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis, get the cases, and make grandma happy. Now, let's talk about human leukocytic antigen, or HLA. They are called antigens, so they are antigens. Where do you find them? On the surface of the white blood cells. Where? In humans. In other words, they are human version of the major histocompatibility complex. Why did we call it major? Because there is minor histocompatibility complex. Why complex? Because it's more than one protein. Why histocompatibility? Because it's compatible with tissue. Translation, the human virgin is different from the monkey virgin, for example. You're saying that um, the human leukocytic engine in human is different from cockroaches? Yes, honey, that's precisely what I'm saying. And this is the whole freaking point. That's why when someone goes to undergo an organ transplant, they do the MHC matching before. Is this new tissue compatible with your tissue? We have three classes of MHC. Class 1, class 2, and class 3. Creative. Okay, class 1, they include HLA, A, B, and C. They interact with the T lymphocyte. Please be specific. The cytotoxic CD8 positive T cell. How about class 2? They have the HLA-D, and we have DP, DQ, DR. 
If you remember your AKG, the first wave was the P wave. We have the P, and then we have the Q, R, S complex, and then whatever. So D, P, D, Q, D, R. And then the D, R has subtypes, D, R2, D, R3, and D, R4. These interact with the T lymphocytes. Please be specific, the helper CD4 T cells. If you pay attention, these interact with T lymphocytes and these interact with T lymphocytes. So you're saying that it's only cell mediated immunity and not humoral immunity? Yes, sunshine, that's exactly what I'm saying. You know, um, passive immunity is actually garbage. Just randomly fighting stuff. Yeah, it's better than nothing, but it's still trash. Like your natural killer cells haphazardly beating the crap out of everything without accuracy, let alone precision. Then, at a higher tier, comes your B lymphocytes, a higher, newer generation. They secrete antibody in the fluids of your body. Fluids, that's why we call it hemoral immunity. Hemoral in medicine means fluid. That's why B lymphocytes action are called hemoral immunity, better than natural killer cells, still not that great. Then at the highest tier we have the T lymphocytes, a great, great new level of specialization, the apex of specialization as Adam Smith would describe it, comes the T lymphocyte, a new world of accuracy and precision, we call it cell mediated immunity, and that's what we're talking about when we talk about the HLA, only T lymphocyte, no B lymphocyte. Some mnemonics. Class 1, they interact with CD8. Class 2, interact with CD4, the T helper cell. 8 times 1 is 8. 4 times 2 is 8. The result is always 8. And this is arguably the oldest medical mnemonic known to man. When God created Adam and after he named the animals, he invented the mnemonic for the major histocompatibility complex and passed it down to future generation together with the X chromosome. I think I'm a stupid idiot. I'm recording under influence. Okay, let's do it from scratch. We have one, two, three. In this direction, we have the MHC and in this direction, we have the HLA. So one, two, three, A, B, C. Here we have D. Also three, P, Q, R. Start with the AKG, which has three letters. P, Q, R, and then R has three subtypes, two, three, four. Let's do it again. We have MHC, one, two, three. We have HLA, A, B, C, D. D, P, D, Q, D, R. The D, R has three subtypes, D, R, two, D, R, three, DR4. Unfortunately, there is DR5 and other stuff, but let's use the KISS principle and keep it simple, stupid. Let's make it more complicated. Human leukocytic antigen, the human version of the MHC. Class 1, class 2, we don't care about class 3 right now. We have A and we have B. How about HLA A3? It's associated with hemochromatosis. Remember, the iron has the ferric and the ferric is 3 plus. Remember, A3. Just the mnemonic, guys, come on. HLAB, we have HLAB27, associated with the seronegative spondyloarthropathies, which we'll talk about later. And HLAB8, Graves disease, Addison's disease, and myasthenia. The cruel O2 antibodies ate my thyroid, my adrenals, and my energy. Your support is greatly needed and appreciated. Please go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. Support this channel. Like to upload more than 10 videos every week. I need your support and thank you so much for advance. I'll give you my notes. I'll give you my cases when you go to Patreon. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell. Smash like. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And please support this channel on Patreon to get my 50 hematology cases and my notes. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. Until next time.